This is a contemporary conservative.net podcast. This is another episode of Conservative Conversations with your host, Reed and Frank. How's it going, Frank? Doing pretty well. How are you, Reed? I'm doing pretty well as well. Good to hear. So how about we hop right into some news? Uh, Starting with something that's a little more near and dear to our hearts, if you will. Maybe not so near and dear, but a little more hits home with us. How about that? Home. That's Uh, right. Take me home. Yeah. Go on, Reed. Take me home. To Country Roads. (laughs) To West Virginia. It's uh, Joe Manchin was targeted by a liberal dark money group. And it's about um, a liberal group who was running ads in West Virginia to try to pressure Joe Manchin uh, into voting along with this uh, D.C. statehood stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll do my best to quote some of the video here. Well, the ad compares... Excuse me. The ad compares West Virginia to D.C., claiming that out-of-touch elites have forgotten about both. And it also claimed that Manchin could be a hero if he supported uh, the movement. And here are some quotes. Our neighbors in the District of Columbia are tax-paying Americans and take pride in their work and their home state, just like West Virginians. Except, their home isn't a state at all. They say out-of-touch elites who have forgotten about West Virginia have forgotten about D.C. You you finished by saying that out-of-touch elites have forgotten about D.C.? Yes, and West Virginia. Don't you think that's kind of funny? (laughs) The elites are in D.C. How could they have forgotten about D.C.? Oh, because... Oh, there's some kind of minority because they're not a state. Is that? I think they're trying to say that. I guess you know people forget have forgotten about D.C. Just as like, I guess elite people have forgotten about poor old West Virginians. I mean, I don't think this. I haven't seen an actual ad. I've only seen these quotes from this news article. Well, I don't understand, and I can tell you right away. I mean, I had mixed thoughts. While hearing this, I haven't heard this title before, you know, to all the people out there. I knew you were going to tell me something about Joe Manchin, but I I haven't read this article myself or anything. And I'm from West Virginia, too. I I believe when I graduated high school, Manchin was our governor. I've been to our state capitol while Manchin was governor. You know, I mean... I'm very aware of Joe Manchin. So, and plus, I'm very aware of West Virginia. So let's get back to that. The idea of dark liberal money or whatever being flooded into the state, to me, is laughable. I mean, there is enough support for Joe Manchin, but but it's because of a little thing I learned in school about called name recognition. Uh, People recognize Joe Manchin, so he's easily elected. They trust... You know, you see a name you know, you trust it more than a name you don't know, right? So I really believe that's a thing. And then you have to consider that all 55 counties, read. we have 55 beautiful counties, and both times they went to Trump. And Manchin knows that. Right. He knows he has to toe that line when he comes home to West Virginians, and that's what he always says on that Senate floor. We both could pull clips. It'd be easy to insert right here should we desire to do so. But he says, I have to go home and face the people of West Virginia. And in this case, where where did the people of West Virginia vote? They voted with him. They did. Against Patrick Morrissey. Remember, you and I were there. Right. You yeah. and I have personal history with this debate right here. The last time Manchin was up for election, he won. Against our wishes. But anyway, to get back to the Joe Manchin aspect is I don't see it as being effective advertisement here, you know, where we call home. And I don't see it being 
an effective, mm. you know, like blackmail on Mansion. I don't see it as really moving him, his position. I don't know that blackmail is an appropriate term, but you you see what I'm trying to say. Maybe is I don't see him really being very affected by this pressured ad- yeah pressured pressured that's a very good very good term yeah <clears throat> but anyway on to other news i think we want to talk about something that i find very exciting uh yep the next uh one we got here we even sort of mentioned this in a previous episode of ours uh, i wish i had the title of it right off hand but it's probably two episodes ago But uh, Mike Pompeo hints at possible 2024 run. For what? Uh, He. President. (gasps) (laughs) No, uh. Uh huh. All my dreams are coming true right now. Mike Pompeo is really going to run for president in 2024. Are you kidding me? Well, Who I'm, can I wait? I, say I really, really want to know all the information about it because I'm going to write the guy a check yesterday. I'm going to post date it. Well, I wouldn't say he's really going to run. He made his comments on uh, while he was on Hannity recently, and uh, Hannity asked him if he would consider running in 2024 if Donald Trump decided he was not going to. And Pompeo said, Sean, I'm always up for a good fight. You and I have been part of the conservative movement for a long time now, and I aim to keep at it. And Handy said he would take his his remarks as a strong maybe. (laughs) And Pompeo said, that's perfect. Perfect. I'll take a strong maybe. But you know what? I'm glad you put it to me that way because I'll also hold off on writing a check. Because I think that's the conservative thing to do. Uh, I'll write the check when the time's appropriate. Okay, I'm not going to go flooding Mike Pompeo with hope and wish money right now. I do wish he'd run the... I wish Maybe I'll write him a letter and tell him he should. Yeah, I mean, he'd probably find it encouraging. I hope so. I definitely think uh, he would make a pretty good candidate. That's for sure. We've oh definitely my God. talked about that. I think just like, okay, our viewers don't know this, but I had a little bit of a conversation with you off air about who I think would be the sure. next best governor of the state we currently live in. And that's how I feel about Mike Pompeo on the national scale. I mean, he's been secretary of state. He wasn't vice uh-huh. president, but... He Close. do you see what I'm saying though? He's he and he's been good. He hasn't fallen out of graces. Mm-hmm. Out of grace, excuse me. Out of graces. He hasn't fallen out of grace. He's still smelling like a sweet rose right now, you know? So he should move up. And where where do you move right. up from Secretary of State? Clinton tried to get president. I think it's fitting for Mike. I mean if he if he had yeah. to be vice president, could you imagine a Trump Pompeo ticket? That's a hell yes. Yeah, that's a hell be, yes. Yeah. But if that's uh, encouraging news for anybody who is a big fan of Mr. Pompeo. Yeah, but I see. Will... Could I ask you a question before we move off topic? Sure. Who do you see as a, a Pompeo VP? VP, his VP. Uh, yeah. So, like, let's let me give you my dream scenario, right? So, in the next round, twenty twenty four, it's Trump Pompeo. Then in twenty twenty eight, it's Pompeo. Question, and you answer it. Oh gosh, twenty twenty eight, uh, Pompeo and well, okay, uh. Pompeo and DeSantis, because by that time, presumably, I don't think he'd be able to be governor anymore in Florida. I don't know what their term limits are. Maybe he would be, but uh, yeah, I think that'd be a good pick, you know, being eight years away. (laughs) Interesting. Well, I'll just answer as if I'm just put on the spot, too, because I did just think of it. But I feel like my gut 
answer would be Cruz. Because I don't know who else would still be alive down... I mean, not alive, but, you know, in the political ring, still active, still fighting in the political ring. Um, and I could see Cruz, because he's kind of a, you know, a swamp creature type. So I could see him still there. And there's something about him that I do kind of like, even though I just called him a swamp creature. So uh, I could see him just guessing in the future, you know, just guessing. I could mm -hmm. see Cruz as a potential presidential candidate, too. And I don't think I'm the first person to say that either. I don't think I'm just way out in left field. But there aren't a bunch. I mean, I'd love to see somebody like Rand Paul. I'd love that. Right. I'd love a Paul. The first person I ever voted for as an adult in a primary. It was only in a primary, of course. It wasn't in a general. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I could have written him in, but I didn't. But in the first primary I ever voted in, I voted for Rand Paul, Ron Paul. <laughs> I voted for Ron Paul. Ron Paul. But I love Rand, too. He's not his father. He's great. But I'd love to see him as president. But that's a very personal, tangential thing. I'd love to see Rand Paul as president or vice president. Right. Well, our next uh, topic doesn't get too far away from what we were just talking about. Because also in that same episode where we previously talked about Mike Pompeo running for president, we talked about the governor of South Dakota, Christy Noem. And something... Oh, yeah, we like her. And I'm sure... Yes, we do. But she has upset me, at least, and quite a few other conservatives. Really? Recently. Uh, yep. Um, I don't know if you know, but their state legislature in South Dakota were, was... I believe they passed, um, or at least are about to pass, a... Bill banning transgendered people from uh, participating in the sports of the... See, their whole deal's confusing. Men who want to be women shouldn't be playing on women's sports. That's basically what the bill says, to put it a little more bluntly. Just to um, clarify, men who want to be women, is that what you said, shouldn't? Yes. Play, play in women's, women's sports. Sports team. Okay. Yep. Yes. I just want to make sure I heard you. Okay. Yep. No problem. Yes. Um, and the state legislature was making a bill to prevent that from happening because, uh, I mean, this could be a whole topic for some other time, but there are several reasons why you would want to do so. Um, but the issue here is Christy Nome had mentioned that she was going to wanted changes to it before she would sign it, and in part because a lot of people think uh, it was because Amazon and the NCAA, which is like the governing body of college sports, I think, basically. Uh-huh. Um, uh, the NCAA threatened to pull sports tournaments from South Dakota, and I believe Amazon uh, threatened to stop or pool plans to build a distribution center or some sort of deal there. Because, of course, Amazon and I guess now the NCAA are big liberal organizations. So um, a lot of people think she came to them instead of standing up against them and fighting for policies that she believes in, because she even was on Tucker and tried to say... You know, I've been working on this for a long time. I've I've helped pass rules to keep girls' rodeos, girls' rodeos, and boys' rodeos, boys' rodeos. So she believes in this, but yet she didn't stand up uh, to Amazon and the NCAA over this bill. And now I just saw today that the state legislature said, sign it or veto it, because they're not going to make any changes. And, you know, this, as I li hinted at, this leads to what we were talking about a little bit before and in the last episode. You know, I, you know, if she doesn't write to herself, I guess, I mean, this could really hurt some of her chances 
at uh, a 2024 run. Okay, so she's against it, right? Against boys being in girls' things. Right. She's opposed to transgendered people being on their okay. Their I'm just trying to gender s- sports teams. I'm just trying to summarize it though. So like, she is against sure, that. Okay. okay, and I would assume vice yep. versa though, right? Too girls being on guys' things. I mean, I don't right, know. Right, yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know how much of a thing that is. It might be a thing. I, d- I have no idea. I'm just asking. So I assume it would sure. work in reverse. Um, so, you know, basically, I, I don't think that boys should be in girls' sports. I mean, I think if you look at a very famous example, a very famous example, somebody like Bruce Jenner, he is on a gold medal award-winning Olympic athlete, okay? Mm -hmm. Looked up to by many people. Many, many, so respected. He's gold, you know? (laughs) And he just, and I, as as far as I understand, he's kind of a conservative person. That's one of the things I can't wrap my head around, too. I'm supposed to believe that, that voting, as far as how he votes, he's conservative. Well, I don't see how that jives, but... You talk about boys and girls sports. I mean, Bruce Jenner, he won gold as a male uh, sprinter or something like that. He ran track. He was a track Olympian. So imagine him. Now he's Caitlyn Jenner. Imagine him going as Caitlyn Jenner and running. Same as his same record. I mean, just imagine it. Give a little bit of, you know leeway here but imagine he goes and runs his same record as a woman wouldn't that really just blow the tits off the whole race yeah wouldn't it i mean that's one of the things they that uh people talk about uh, when they're talking about the issue is that you have these you know naturally born male people who undoubtedly science has shown Men are just naturally stronger than women. Or running running against and competing against women. Of, of course they're going to win every time. How's that fair to the the real women? Well, and I, I don't know if we did discuss this before or not. I've talked about it before. But, you know, it's really sad for the girls who are supposed to get mm-hmm. scholarships. The girls right. who would have been the best in their category but no mm-hmm. longer are. The girls who can no longer compete, the girls that feel embarrassed or can't, whose parents won't allow them to compete against this type of person. Right. Well, we have the, I'm pretty sure there's a case uh, in Connecticut, a few girls on a track team. Uh, I don't know if they're suing the school. I assume it'd be the school they're suing. Or the Um, school board or the county or or something, you know, something. Yeah. Right. Um, Because they were, before some men joined their team, they were the the top performers, uh, I believe, in the state a few times. Right. And all of a sudden, now they're coming in third, fourth, uh, whatever place. Because they don't have a boy on their team. Right. Right? Doesn't that what it... That kind of is... Uh... Because they're they're not up to the times. Is that it, Reed? Right. They don't want to be. They it. Oh, I could see how a liberal could be grotesque by that, but I mean, it's supposed to be an all girls school, okay? Yeah. Right? And how does that help the girls? <laughs> how does it yep. help the girls to start letting boys in? I don't care what you believe, your little liberal faith, your crazy ideology. If you seriously come back to earth for one second, how does it help to let boys in an all girls school? Well, it's almost completely antithetical to the whole feminist movement in like the 60s and 70s. Well, you know, they call it like third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave, sixth right. wave, 117th wave lesbian queer dance theory bullshit. You know how all that is. <laughs> 
it gets crazier and crazier the further down the line you go. Right. It's it's an issue that I hope to see uh, Christy Nome uh, come back around and actually support. And hopefully she'll sign the bill in South Dakota that the les- legislature is going to likely pass to her desk. But for our next uh, headline here, we probably won't spend too much time on it. Uh, but it's uh, Joe Biden's recent press conference, his first formal one as president. And uh, it, well, depending on what news channel you got on, it either went splendidly well, or you saw what probably most people saw, and it did not go all that well. Very many gaffes. Uh, he wandered off into basically endless sentences or thoughts that didn't go anywhere or make any sense. Not a good performance. No, very sad. I saw highlights from that. I saw what you're talking about where he just sort of wanders forward into the press where they're all sitting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, and then he has to wander back because he starts talking. He has no microphone, and he has to go back and talk into the microphone where the, you know at the podium where there is one. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he just sort of looks like a fool. He sort of is an international embarrassment. You know, I think a lot of people are laughing at him, not just the conservative Americans. I think people in Canada, Europe. Australia, you name it. I think more and more people are uh, not laughing at him, but feeling sad. I I think it is sad. You said it a second ago. It's sad yeah. that the Democrat Party keeps pushing this man out there as if there's nothing wrong, as if he's going to be able to lead our country in whatever most trying times may come, if any. And but right before our eyes he's withering away in, in his, you know, men- mental faculty. Well, you know the Democratic Party has a history of that. Yeah, they do. I mean you had FDR in the wheelchair that nobody this is a true fact, you can look it up. Nobody for the longest time knew or was allowed to tell that he was in a mm-hmm. wheelchair. They weren't allowed to picture him in a wheelchair. They weren't allowed to show the wheelchair. They weren't allowed to draw attention to that. And then also, similarly, Woodrow Wilson, a.k.a. the worst president in history, he had like a massive stroke, and his wife... Gosh, do you know her name? Pretty much did everything. Do you know her name? No, I feel like I heard it recently. I feel like it's like Elizabeth or Anne or something. You know, it's one of those classical names. Anne or Elizabeth or something proper... You know, I don't know. But uh, she, like, propped him up in bed and kept him, like, you know, uh, at work. (laughs) I don't even know how to put that. She had people, like, come see him in bed, and she'd, like, prop him up and say, look, see, see him, you know. (laughs) Like a puppet, like, uh, what do you call the, what's that puppet from Pinocchio? Do you call him Pinocchio? Yeah. Yeah, the puppet maker's that's Geppetto. That's kind of what I was trying to come up with. Geppetto was the guy. So I feel like with um, Biden, he's Geppetto. And we're always wondering who's the guy. Some people say it's Obama, but I don't know. I don't know. All right, and uh, to round out our show here, the last uh, topic is something you provided me before we... Got on air uh, is uh, the COVID a story about yep the uh, uptick in cases despite uh, the vaccinations being rolled out. Well, and it sort of is a story of Fauci looking like a fool, in my opinion. Um, a few uh, things from the video. Uh, let's see. They stated 136 million doses of the virus have been... Not virus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you're talking uh, like well, me. Technically you're talking like me. I know. Of course, technically. What? 
you're throwing a curveball in my favor, I think, right out of the bat, right out of the gate. Excuse me. <laughs> but the vaccine have been uh, administered, um, and then 15- just say that over again. 136 yeah. million doses of the vaccine have been administered. Yes. Um, and then 15% of the country has been fully vaccinated, uh, which is, depending on what shot you get, both doses of the shot or just the one if you get the Johnson & Johnson. Uh, almost half of seniors over 65 have been fully vaccinated. And then another thing the video talked about, uh, which is kind of related, which is poly- which is the reason for the video, is um, that there's currently a study of 12,000 college students uh, to determine whether or not um, you can be an asymptomatic carrier after receiving receiving uh, a vaccination shot, and we won't receive that data for five to six months, per Dr. Fauci. So I'm just gonna go through all this in reverse with you, right? In five or six months, we're gonna find out from a study of only twelve thousand college students if they can still spread. The virus. See, that's what that means to be an asymptomatic carrier. So we're going to find out if you can still spread that word that they use all the time. If you can still spread the virus even after you've had the vaccine. So there's a question, right, of whether or not the vaccine even really, like, does what they want it to do fully. I mean, because ideally, if you were inoculated, you wouldn't be a spreader of it either you wouldn't be a carrier right you'd just be immune right presumably i presumably is fine with me yes i mean even if you're just being agreeable for the for the sake of the conversation i think that that is presumable though but then you say you put the number 15 percent is fully vaccinated against 136 million people having received a dose of the vaccine Well, that means, in my mind, okay, you put those numbers together, that's almost half the population, or more. It's like 330 million people. What's half of 330? I guess it it is a little less. It'd be like 165, right? Yeah, something like that. Okay, well, 136 is a lot closer to 165 than it ain't. It's a lot closer than 100 or 95 or 46, you know. 136 is a big number. It's You're getting pretty close to half of the American people with 136 million people. But then you say only 15%? Yeah, 15% are fully vaccinated. Yeah. But see, you talk about flip-flop Fauci. Would you call him? I think you even said it right here, didn't you? Five masks. Uh... Flip flop. Oh, I said that earlier. <laughs> Whatever you call it, say it. Say it. Yeah. Five mask flip flop Fauci. Yeah. How are you supposed to listen to him and the CDC? What's fully vaccinated? I think that'll just change in a year. You know, there'll be a, you know, maybe for the Moderna, they'll need another one. And maybe because the Johnson and Johnson didn't have another one, it'll need another one. You know, I mean, it's not the craziest thing you've ever heard. It's plausible. It's possible. It could happen. Sure. You don't know. We're talking about even Fauci don't know. He d- he won't know for six months, Reed. Right. He's like a magic eight ball. You shake it in and it says ask again later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. So I'm just saying, if only 15% of the people are vaccinated, but almost half of them have all had a shot, and we still won't know the efficacy of this vaccine until six months down the road, I'd rather just study these people that I saw get the shot. I'm not going to get it. I want to see what happens to them. Fauci won't know for six months. I guess we won't either. Right. 
And I already know some people who got it, Reed, so I feel like I've got test subjects I can watch. What will happen to them? Do they grow a third eye? Huh? Do they get a third ear? What happens, huh? Do they drop dead in six months? Well, only time will tell. I'm just glad. I'm really very thankful. I want to thank God that I am not somebody who has just taken a gamble on this thing. I'm very thankful for that. I'm sorry if that offends anybody, but I really am very thankful for that thing. Well, there's definitely reasons to have questions about it and all the studies that you should be done. I mean, because it's just like it, the virus is new, so the vaccines are new. How, how are we supposed to know all of its effects if we aren't doing the studies? So. But I just don't like the idea. See, that's the whole thing, is listening to Fauci today. I only heard it today. He might have said this a day or two before. He might have said this on Friday last. I don't know. But you hear this quip of him saying, I can't answer your questions for six more months. And I'm just thinking, why did these people take this? Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, they can't even answer simple questions about it. But but the data I'm reading and led to believe is that almost half of the people have already taken the shot. And they're trying to make it not seem that way because only 15% are fully vaccinated. See, we still have to f- infect everybody. We've got to jab everybody, Reed. Even though almost half of everybody's had it. we got to jab the rest. we got to jab them, jab them, jab them. These numbers you gave me, they're beautiful. 136 million people have been shot in the arm, but only 15%. When will enough be enough? Will will ever be enough? I doubt it. I don't want in their system. I do not want in their system. All right, but on that note, are we just going to say la-di-da and ask everybody to join us on... <laughs> The Wacky Wonderful Radio Show! Let's not on the radio. Oh, yeah. Yep. We'll be recording that one up next, but it's not really going to matter to anybody because it's not like you're listening to it live and just change the channel. But, you know, if you're listening to this, you can go check it out wherever you're listening to this because, you know, that's how podcasts work. You can... Yeah, chances are, chances are you can click up or down, left or right, and find our wonderful, wacky radio show. That's right. And remember to leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, I believe we got on Google Play Podcast or whatever they call it. Um, and we hope you tune in next time. And thank you for listening.